Hi, I'm Doug Carroll. Welcome to our session on equity swaps. Today we're going to give you a broad overview of this rapidly evolving section of the derivatives markets. And today we'll start out with a, an introduction, a brief introduction of swaps in general, but then rapidly segue to a, a quick intro into equity swaps, look at the various details of the contracts, uh, the applications that market participants use them for, as well as pricing and valuation issues. So let's begin our discussion of equity swaps. So first off, what is an equity swap? Well, we'll go into that in excruciating detail over the course of the session, but in simple terms, equity swaps are an over-the-counter derivative where the, the parties to the contract are exchanging, well, there's a couple of ways we could describe it. We could say they're exchanging or swapping risks or exposures issues that I'll delve into in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. But the risks or exposures the counterparties are exchanging are in some way, shape, or form tied to the, the value of equities. Could be individual equity, could be a group of equities, and we'll talk about the various structures. The equity swaps market is actually one of the more recently evolving segments of the derivatives market. In fact, swaps in general didn't exist prior to 1982. The first swap, actually a currency swap between the World Bank and IBM, didn't occur until that year. And here we are, just over 30 years later, and the swaps market is actually the largest segment of the derivative markets. So as you can see, it's a very vibrant and obviously rapidly growing market. Equity swaps were one of the last of the swaps developed. In fact, uh, while the first swap, as I indicated, occurred in 1982, the, the first equity swap didn't occur until the late 1980s, uh, sometime after the, the development of all of the other forward commitment swaps, currency swaps, interest rate swaps, commodity swaps. And the last of the group to come along was equity swaps. But part of the reason it was able to grow as rapidly as it did was because the, the basic terminology, the concepts, the infrastructure for trading these sorts of things had been evolved in the context of the rapid growth of those other segments of the forward commitment swap market. So equity swaps was in a sense able to stand on the shoulders of those other markets and therefore able to evolve a lot more rapidly. And one of the reasons for the rapid evolution in, in this equity swap shares in common with those other forward commitment swap segments that, that I indicated has to do with the huge number of advantages equity swaps users are able to obtain relative to trading the, the related equities directly. And, and we'll look at these advantages in context where they'll have more meaning or more resonance, hopefully. But just to give you a, a, a quick foreshadowing of what we're going to talk about later. Swaps convey advantages related to the flexibility of creating these, these uh, exposures. Uh, they also, in many cases, are dramatically less expensive to trade than the related equities. And the swaps give you a lot of ability to, to circumvent complications or costs that one would encounter by trading the, the related securities directly as opposed to getting the exposures by trading the, the, uh, the equity swaps, the derivative contract related to those actual equities. So as I indicated before, a swap is nothing more than an over-the-counter contract between two counterparties. And here I've just referred to them as generically counterparty A and counterparty B. But in the vast majority of swap transactions, at least one of the counterparties is a swap dealer. In fact, oftentimes both counterparties are swap dealers that will trade with one another as ways of managing the risk of their swaps book. But will for the most part focus on swaps where at least one of the counterparties is a, a user of that swap, a client in other words. Someone using the swap for either risk management or speculative purposes. Oftentimes, again, because they find it more advantageous to do the whatever sort of market strategies they're trying to uh, enact, they oftentimes find it more efficient to do that through use of a swap rather than trading the related equity securities themselves. And oftentimes a swap, as indicated by this diagram, it's referred to as a swap because the two counterparties are agreeing to exchange, as I said before, risks or exposures. But those risks or exposures are quantified in the form of what are referred to as service payments. So you can see that in the diagram, as I have it indicated here, you've got one counterparty making a stream of service payments to the other in return for which they're receiving from that counterparty service payments tied to something else. 
Those service payments are oftentimes referred to as legs of the swap, and as we'll see further on in the discussion, how the contracts establish the cash value of each of those, those streams of service payments, and, and then how the gains or losses are recognized by the two counterparties. So first off, just what a swap is before we get into details and equity swaps. Well, as I indicated before, a swap is a contract between two counterparties. And it's, as I indicated before as well, an over-the-counter contract. Now, the significance of those items. Unlike exchange-traded contracts, where the exchange itself will establish the terms of the contract, say for exchange-traded futures or options contracts, types of derivatives that in the case of futures always trade on exchanges or in the case of options often trade on exchanges. Swaps are purely over-the-counter contracts, in other words, off exchange. The implications of that are the counterparties, the two parties to the trade or the contract, are actually negotiating all the terms. Not just what sort of, uh, of exposure is being created, but also the length of the contract, the frequency of computing the value of those streams of service payments and, and how often they'll make some money adjustments for that. So again, swaps are over-the-counter contracts where all the terms are negotiated between the two counterparties. And as far as what's being swapped in any sort of swap, well, as I indicated before, the parties are swapping or exchanging risks or exposures. Now, I'll, I'll embellish on that in more detail later, but, but not to, to, to hold off on it too long. In simple terms, exposure simply means that one has a position in the market, and once that position is taken, depending on, on how market conditions change, one might either be generating a gain on that exposure if the market moves in their favor, or generating a loss on that exposure should the market move against them. Now, I'll be more specific about how those gains and losses are accrued and under what conditions the, the, the market uh, change might benefit one or the other of the counterparties. But in simple terms, that's all exposure means. And so that's what's taking place in a swap, the counterparties are exchanging these exposures. And they might be taking on the exposure they're picking up through the swap, possibly as a way of managing risk. In other words, the exposure being taken on through the swap might actually offset some other exposure. And we'll look later on at how swaps are used to offset existing risks. But swaps can also be used to take on exposures. And why might someone take on an exposure via a swap rather than trading the, the related equity securities? Well, as indicated before, market participants in many cases will find it more advantageous to establish that exposure through a swap, either because it's less expensive or the position can be entered or exited more easily, more liquid in other words, uh, or the swap might enable them to, to circumvent uh, complications that might be encountered where they'd be trading the actual securities as opposed to obtaining that exposure through the swap. And while the diagram we saw previously and that's replayed at the bottom of this page as well shows the, the counterparties in a sense exchanging service payments, that's typically not the case. In the vast majority of instances, what will happen is they'll compute the value of those two streams of, of service payments, or the two legs. And then rather than paying both of the legs in full, they'll, at least where possible, and this is in the vast majority of the cases true, they'll net those, those values out. And so the party owing the larger amount will make a payment equal to the difference between the value of the two legs. Now, if, if those words weren't, weren't clear, don't worry. We'll actually illustrate that with a, a number of examples later on. We'll compute the value of the legs and go through the computation of a settlement payment. But as I was indicating before, this will be true in the vast majority of instances. The, the parties won't be paying the legs in full. Uh, except, of course, in the case of currency swaps, because in the case of cross-currency swaps, the two legs are expressed in interest rates in different currencies, and so there's no obvious way to net them out. So in cross-currency swaps, the counterparties are typically paying the value of the leg they owe in full. But in all of the other swaps I identified, interest rate, uh, commodity, and equity, since both of the legs will be denominated in the same currency typically, then in that case we'll simply net the value of the two legs out, and whoever owed the larger of those two legs will make a payment to the counterparty equal to the, the difference between the value of the two legs.